All right, here we go. How I wash out a Putzmeister style hopper. So step one, the first thing I like to do, and for today, just to make this more relevant to what most people do, um, I did not use the ball stopper and I only sucked back just one sponge just to make it more, uh, more relevant and relatable. So what I'm gonna do here, critical thing, before I bust that back end open, let's just assume I traveled half an hour up the hill, down a hill, whatever, to the washout area. Rev this girl up a little bit here. Do a couple strokes in reverse. And here we go. Just a couple. And why I do that is sometimes when I'm traveling, we live in a mountainous range here. Um, when you go up a hill, sometimes the sponge, which is always sitting on the transition door here, can actually get pushed back up into this elbow here. So I do a couple strokes to make sure it's right where I want. The other thing I should mention about doing that, if you have traveled a long ways, when you put the pump in reverse, just in case the S-tube isn't gonna shift over, if it's uh, segregated a little bit in the hopper, be ready to hit that interrupt because if you leave it stroking and the S-tube doesn't shift, it can actually push the sponge the opposite way, which is obviously counterproductive to what we're trying to achieve. So anyhow, now we've done that. Next step. We're gonna bust open the back end here. Before, 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 before we dump the hopper. And there is a reason for this. A very, very important reason for this. Critical step, often overlooked. So I am going to bust this back in. And I use a single round ball sponge, which will always, always, always be sitting on the transition door, right about where that uh, slurry cap is. I'll show you from the other end. There's our friend, right there. The reason I do this, if I go and bust that hopper and drop all the concrete out of it that's in there, then open up the back end only to find my sponge has not come all the way back. But once that hopper is empty, now I don't have nearly as good a vacuum as I do when the hopper is full. So if the hopper is still full and I haven't dropped it, I can just button this back up, wind the pump up in reverse, and most of the time bring the sponge home the rest of that way. If I were to drop that hopper, my only resort now is close it back up, top it up with the water above the level of the cylinders so they get sufficient vacuum, then try and pull it back. So it's just, uh, you end up eating up a bunch of your water, eating up a bunch of time. So always, always, always bust the back end, verify that the sponge is there before dumping the hopper. So now that we know our sponge is where we want it to be, we bust this open. And bear with me today, I'm doing this from an iPhone. I forgot the GoPro at home, so I'm gonna try and uh, do as much as I can with one hand here. So I always like to stroke and reverse relatively slowly. A lot of this stuff here is just preference. And I'll crack this ever so slightly, letting the concrete gently fall to the ground as such to minimize splashing all over my undercarriage. So I'll take a few strokes like this. You can see I've got the handy dandy rubber curtain there to keep the splash down. Some guys have a mat that runs all the way across the back, which is a really slick setup. I actually wish I had one of those, but. And now that we know most of this is out, we'll bust her open the rest of the way. I'm gonna flip my lid up and we'll check back in when we're uh, on the next important step, so. Stay tuned. Okay, next step, here we are stroking away in reverse. What I'm gonna do is I wanna clean out the material cylinders. I'm gonna let this S-tube shift over. Once it's over on that side, I'm gonna lift this hopper grate up, like so. What that does, it dumps my accumulator. It does let the pump finish off the stroke, bringing the cylinder, or the uh, uh, piston cup, I should say, right close to the end of the cylinder. So now I'm gonna take my water, I'm gonna rinse out the, uh, the cylinder on this side. And my reasoning for what I'm doing here and, and the order in which I do things, assuming worst case scenario, I run out of water, my water hose blows apart, I don't know, whatever, the one in a million things. Start with the expensive stuff. 
and the stuff that's toughest to clean back of the yard. Material cylinders, extremely expensive, next to impossible to clean out if they've left full of concrete. So we're gonna start by cleaning those first. I love this self-retracting hose wheel. She's a beauty. Half inch diameter, green line, blue water hose. Best hose out there, in my opinion. So we're gonna climb up here. Keeping our hands a safe distance from the agitator. Even though the accumulator is dumped, you never know. Never trust anything these days. I'm gonna rinse out this one barrel. All right, she's good. I'm gonna flip my grate back down. Try and do this with one hand, she's a little heavy. Flip her back down. Reset the accumulator. Throw her in reverse. Repeat the process, except on the other side. Accumulator's dumped, piston is gonna stop any second. Boom, there it is. We'll take our water over to this side. Do the same thing, we'll spray out this cylinder. Like so, I'm all in here, I'll give it a quick little just around the opening there to the barrel. Just so that when I move on to the S tube and I'm flushing the S tube but I don't have concrete from the hopper by chance falling into the opening of the cylinder there. So we can see that's pretty clean, right? Next step, put the grate down, reset the accumulator dump, crank the volume up, and we'll move on to the S-tube here. Let's try and get the tarp out of the way. And I'm lucky I got some pretty good lighting today. I can actually see right in this tube. Start by cleaning out this groove at the back bearing. Critical to keep that void as a void as such the grease can work its way through. So always clean that groove out first, just like that. And I just do a little bit of this. This will be the more boring part of the video. Something kind of like that. Keeping the water going. Let's have a look and we want that water to be nice and clear. And she is nice and clear. Wipe my lens off here. One other thing I'm gonna do here before I forget, this is an easy one to forget trap door of the hopper. Oh, let's we'll see here. Try to get a little better camera angle. There we go. Something like that. I hate it when guys forget to clean that off and you get a big lump of concrete on it. Um, pet peeve with the newer puts hoppers with this apron here. It's really tough to access that trap door if you ever have to clean it off to get up underneath there. Um, there actually is an update from Putzmeister for trimming this off. There's a whole schematic diagram on exactly where to mark it, where to cut it. Haven't done that on ours. Probably will look into it in the future. So anyhow, I will move on to the uh, next step here. So stay tuned. Okay, so this is all pretty standard fare in here. Uh, the only thing I will show you, and you've seen this in my previous videos, um, I always put a bucket of dirt right under the back bearing, right about there. So we had a couple hot loads here. Uh, so I'm gonna show you now that I have that sand there, what would normally be hardened concrete, but because I put sand and dirt in there, just a couple wax with this bar, boom. Boom, something like that. And one more for good measure. Let's see how this works. Oh, would you look at that.
And yeah, you get the idea. I've demoed this a bunch of times before, but otherwise I'd have a uh, hardened mass of concrete under there. I'd have to beat on it quite a bit harder with that rebar or possibly use a chipping gun. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely always put a bucket of dirt, sand, whatever you got right against the back there. Bark mulch is my all time absolute favorite. So I'm gonna continue on cleaning the inside of the hopper here and we'll uh, check back once again, uno momento. Okay, so yes, I am typically a big proponent of doing sponge, water sponge, double sponge for spotlessly clean pipes. Uh, today, because we're just doing some residential footings, it's just a regular uh, low strength residential mix, not a ton of cement or fines in it. So what I got is uh, single medium density brown foam sponge. And I'll put lots of water in front of that. That being said, I make sure my boom is pumped out, fully sucked back into the deck pipe because I'm going to put lots of water in front of it. Uh, if you've got stuff hanging up in the elbows and you flood the, uh, the boom with water before the first sponge, uh, you'll end up like a video with one of my previous ones where the sponge got stuck. But anyhow, um, yeah, I love these sponges because they're rubberized foam. They actually seal up a lot better. Um, they seal the air a lot better and they're way quicker to clean out. So just put that right back in there. These guys here, I don't even want to talk about. I, I hate those square sponges. I don't even want to, uh, I'm sad to admit I even have one on the pump here, but I do. Anyhow, one other thing I do here, super, super critical, especially using that round ball sponge. Only a five inch round sponge. Once it hits this elbow here, and you get into your five inch, a six inch reducer by the time that sponge is coming back down here it's not tight against the walls of that reducer so you end up with a lot of cream and whatnot in that reducer so what i do when i'm washing out make sure to get my water tarp out of my way here excuse me for a moment take my water hose and i spray up into that reducer as much as i can Get the water up there as high as I can so it starts to come out clean. Then on my next job or the next day, I'm not trying to prime through a uh, big old creamy reducer. So that is one thing I do religiously. Always spray water up that elbow. If you're using the square sponges, which are like a 10 inch uh, 10 by 10 or whatever, they will wipe that reducer clean, but the small round balls will not. So anyhow, um, finish up here I'm gonna button this back up or get it close to buttoned up and then uh, I'm gonna show you the last or what I would consider to be the most important step here so all right here is the last most important step every single time at the end of the washout um, grease the pump you can either use the machines auto greaser or what I like to do because I'm old school and I don't trust computers at least not fully automated ones I put my trust in semi-automated electronic devices. So I'm going to put the pump in reverse, about a three on the volume, stroke every five to seven seconds. Make sure the water is turned off because I want my agitator spinning while I do this. Throw this little baby in reverse. I'll try this with one, with one hand here. This is going to be a little tough. A little tough. We've got our manual grease port right here, like so. I'm going to do about 40 pumps of grease on this. Let it stroke over five or six times while... Well, no. I'm going to find a better way here, people. Sorry. There we go. I got it. Just hammer that grease in. And let it stroke over one more time. 
like so. We'll stop this. Let's have a look. So where I want to see grease is, out in the large bearing here, we're good. We got grease coming through there. I want to see grease at the agitator seals. We're good on this side. And tough for you to see from the camera angle, but there it is. We're good on that side. I want to see grease coming from the small bearing. Focus, 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 baby. There we go. We got grease from the small bearing. So I want to see grease coming through all those surfaces. And there's some at the front side of the large bearing there too. So yeah, if you, uh, all it takes is one time for getting to grease the pump and you park it overnight or over the weekend and you've got grout or slurry in any of those gaps or voids, uh, damage is already done. So you have to, have to, have to, have to grease at the end of every single washout. So it's probably the most important thing I could even talk about here with this washout. So um, Milwaukee grease gun, the M18, I really like. I had the 12 volt version. It worked well also, just the battery life was a little bit not great. And uh, it didn't uh, didn't have quite the, the jam that this thing does. So I'm super happy with that. Like I said, this pump has an auto greaser. You could just engage an auto, uh, engage an auto greasing cycle. Um, I just like to use this thing. I just have a little bit more, uh, I don't know, it gives me a, a sense of control. We all want control, right? Um, the only other thing I'm gonna say, this is the last one, and this could be a bunch of voodoo. I'm sure I'll get plenty of comments about this. Whenever I'm done washing out, what I typically do, I'm gonna put it in reverse, to count how long between each stroke. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, one, two, three, four, five and a half. Done. So what I'm doing there is, and this was explained to me by a uh, old time pump operator who swears that his piston cups would last three times as long as any of his coworkers. The drive cylinder, the chrome rod, which the piston cup is attached to, is a little over six feet in length. If you park the machine with one cylinder fully extended, you got a six foot chrome rod and all that weight, pretend my fist is the piston cup, is sitting on that cup as the pump is parked. Having all that weight of that rod and the cup supporting it, as it was explained to me, flattens out the lips on the piston cup, which causes them to fail sooner. So I always count how long the stroke is and then stop it exactly halfway such that each rod is halfway out thus equally distributing the forces on both piston cups so this could be completely a bunch of uh mumbo jumbo conspiracy theory blah 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 but this is just something i do and i swear that my cups do last longer so i don't know call me crazy but uh that's what somebody told me that's what i do Give it a try. It's easy enough to do. There's no uh, no harm in doing it. It doesn't cost you anything. So anyhow, that is my washout for the day. Key takeaways, always start with the expensive stuff. Get the cylinders clean first, then move on to the S-tube. Then worry about rinsing down the walls of the hopper, yada, yada, yada. Things like the back transition door, the elbow, even the S-tube to an extent. Uh, those can always be chipped out after the fact. Drive cylinders, uh, not quite so much. So anyhow, start with the expensive stuff. Lots and lots and lots of grease when you're finished up your washout. Always clean the uh, top side, I guess it would be, of the, uh, the, the uh, trap door on the hopper there. Spray a little bit of water up in this six inch elbow to flush that, let it fall back down and stop your cylinders halfway down the stroke. That is the way that I do it. I swear this is going to be like a sponge sucking video where there's a million different theories and a million different ways to do it. And none are actually more right or wrong than the other, but it makes for some great conversation. So anyhow, that is it for today. Thanks again for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Over and out. Oh yeah, I forgot. The really, really most important thing, second degree thing, which I started the video off with. Don't dump your hopper until you verify that your sponge is where the sponge is supposed to be. Water washers, 
this doesn't apply to you. But yeah, that was uh, the second key most important thing. So do that too, gentlemen, do that too.